What's going on, Pack? Steve Del Savio from Pack Leader Dogs, episode seven of the Pack Leader Show. We are here on Labor Day weekend, actually Labor Day 2018. I always use the dates, by the way, so we can go back in time and hopefully years down the road, the show gets bigger and bigger. We have awesome guests on and stuff like that. And we can look at how ridiculous we were on this show and doing things like half-assed and not really half-assed, but just trying to figure it out, like how we're doing it kind of today. Um, we don't have our normal producer, Adam, here, who's been doing a bunch of our social media content. I'm sure you guys have been seeing like a lot of the Instagrams where we're doing like the templates on there and the, the wording and all that stuff. We're, I, I've been investing in Adam and he's actually been taking way less of pay to be with us because he believes in us. I believe in him. So it's been a really good team. He's actually back in out, out in LA getting ready for our Training Caesars Way workshop that we're going to be doing next week. So uh, he'll be back in a couple weeks. We'll be doing some more stuff. Um, we're trying to still get as, enough, as much content out. It's not as easy when we have a crazy full schedule every day. But we're doing our best here um, to do it in the meantime. We got Cassie behind the camera over here. We got Jay from our team here who's, who's taking over Adam's role today. So if there's any technical difficulties, We'll give you his Instagram name so you can go attack him on there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so speaking of attacking, right? This is something I want to talk about because I get asked these questions a lot. Is and they, I shouldn't say a lot, but a good like a good amount in my Instagram of Instagram, Facebook, YouTube of people messaging me personally from rescues, other trainers, um, just from all aspects of the dog world of how do you deal with people who send you negative comments and how do you deal with people who attack you? How do you deal with you know people just spreading hate? Honestly. And recently, I, I was out in California. We did a live show with Caesar, um, his Caesar Milan live show, which is a fantastic show. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but if not, check out uh, Ticketmaster, where we do shows all over the country and internationally. Um, it's a show that I, I went on with a good friend of mine, Colleen. She was doing it for a while. She had a baby, so I've been taking over for her during the show. Um, it's a show that, that, that really, we do it on stage because one of the biggest critiques of Caesar was that, oh yeah, it's all edited, it's all fake, it's not real. So we do it right on stage for people right in front of them with dogs from rescues that have some pretty bad issues and we bring them on stage and show how just changing the leash, just changing pressure, just changing the handler of energy, how much that affects everything. But one of the rescues that we worked with out in California, the girl um, reached out to me, super nice lady, like really caring person, loves dogs, helping so much. Like you can feel how passionate she is and how, how, uh, how much she's into it. I'm not sure if she wants me to mention her name, so I'm not going to here. If she tells me after this that she has no issue, I'll definitely promote her rescue. Um, but she sent me a message basically saying like, how, you know, that she was dealing with some hate and some some people like attacking her and stuff like that and basically talking shit about what she's doing. And she's like, what do, you know, why are people like this, blah, blah, blah. So being someone, like so in the beginning of my career, that was something that I took so personally and I think everybody who starts um, putting themselves out there and they, you know, it's, it's in our own insecurities of really caring so much about what other people think. So this is a big issue in, in, for me in, in society and what, what's holding people back from actually fulfilling their dreams and going for what they really want to do is they're so concerned about the opinions of others, right? But if you really break it down and think about it, so this girl said, someone said to her that, so she has primarily a pit bull rescue. Some girl said to her that I'm sorry that whatever you're saying is basically bullshit. Once a pit bull has aggression and tastes blood, it means that they're going to be killers for life and blah, blah, blah. So obviously total nonsense. Anyone who knows dogs knows it's total bullshit, but it's things that I'm sure she's getting more and more of that. So how do you deal with it? The reality is, is that I mean, I get things like that, not, not usually that hateful. I mean, we do actually like sometimes get some real mean shit, like personal things and like, you know, some comments. I would say that it's, or it's honestly super, super like minority that we get it. People would expect that like we would get a decent amount. The dog training world is very cutthroat. Trainers attack each other, clients, uh, everybody's attacking each other. I just choose not to get involved in any of that shit. I don't try to attack anybody. I just want to just promote what the hell I'm doing because it seems like it's working and I've, I've got a lot of experience doing it. So 
I'm not saying this stuff or doing what I'm doing, saying I'm the best ever. I know everything. You guys need to all follow me. This is the only way. Like what you're doing is wrong. You're bad. You're evil. You're, I don't like, if you are working with dogs and getting results and it's, and it's going well and you're helping dogs and helping people, like all the power to you. I don't care how you're doing it. Well, I should say I do care how you're doing it, but as long as you're doing it in a, in a humane way and doing it in a, in a, in a caring way and a loving way, then all the power to you if you're getting results. But my, my issue is when people are sending messages to other people who are really trying to help dogs and people saying that they're idiots, they don't know what they're talking about, this is bullshit, you're, you know, dogs do this, dogs do that. So I told her, I said, really think about like where that person is coming from. So something that really helped me was I started being empathetic of others. So instead of taking it personally, someone, let's just say someone sends me a message. What did we get recently? Someone said something, they were like, ha ha ha, what a fraud. Yeah, so someone recently said to me, ha ha ha, what a fraud, right? This is someone who I've obviously never met. I don't know, you know, knows nothing about me personally, like, Never really see, aside from the videos, it doesn't see me work dogs, doesn't see me work with clients, and was to, called me a fraud. Back in the day, I would have got so pissed off and I would have been like angry and been like, I can't believe this freaking girl called me a fraud and like, she doesn't know how hard, but then what happened is the busier I got in life, the more I started to look at a day of like, all right, so I have X amount of energy in this day to use. Any of the energy that I'm using on somebody else to defend myself, to argue back, to get involved in what they're doing is time that I'm taking away from helping the people who actually want help and take, taking away from the dogs who actually need my help. I mean, there's millions of dogs being killed a year for not the correct reasons and just from lack of education about dogs. So that's what really helped me is I started looking at that as like someone's, instead of they're attacking me, like I just kind of put up like a thick skin. I just like, whatever, you can think what you want about me at this point. Because I started looking at it as, as when I started dealing with that person who's saying all that shit, who's like coming from a place of insecurity, coming from a negative place, like think about, really process this guys. Someone took time out of their day, right? And they said, all right, how am I gonna use all the energy in my day? For part of the day, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go on the computer or on my phone and I'm going to attack somebody, call them a name, insult them, spread hate, spread negativity to try to make them feel bad. So what kind of person is that? You know what I mean? That's Now, I don't say that that's a bad person. That's just someone, who, in my opinion, who's struggling with something in their life. There's some sort of insecurity, there's some sort of fear, there's sort of some sort of pain or suffering that's happening. So that's where I started feeling the, the empathy factor. I said, why am I getting so angry at this person when they're obviously dealing with, it, with pain or some sort of suffering and they're trying to project it onto me? Now, you'll get people like the, the same people will say, yeah, right, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm good, I'm good. That's ego talking, that's, that's uh, you know denial and all those things. And the reason I know that is because I was that. So there's a lot of people who will, you know, who will question certain things, but I, if you notice when I talk about stuff on here, I don't really talk about uh, like art. I don't talk about um, like shit that I don't know. I'm just talking about the things that I do know from experience. I don't, if someone said, hey, what do you think about running this play for the, for the Jets this weekend in football? I'd be like, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I just watch them on Sundays every once in a while. So what the hell do I know about football? But if you ask me, hey, when you had a dog who did this, what, what, what did you think I should do? I'm just talking about that maybe I ha I've worked with 406 dogs who have done that thing. And this overall was the thing that worked the best for me with that particular dog. So I'm getting a little off track, but it's really having empathy for the other person, right? If understanding where is that person coming from, they're coming from a negative place. So what I started to also do is, is because I was like those people who would like try to, try to send my negativity or send my like pain onto other people, I started realizing that I actually started becoming grateful for the people who, were, who attacked me. So meaning that when someone says to me, wow, you're such a fraud, I look at that now and I say, wow, this is awesome. Thank you for saying that because you're reminding me exactly of the person that I used to be that I don't want to be anymore. So it gives me perspective of, I don't want to be a person who's going to spread negativity and hate. There's enough of that shit going around. Just turn on the freaking TV and watch the news and what everyone hates it. 
I, I should say everybody, but a lot of people are spreading hate, negativity. That's the loudest. Positivity, support, love, all that shit is the one that's in the big minority right now. So I've just chosen now in my life to just promote that. People who are spreading that hate, they, they're not open really right now to direction. Now, if someone said like, hey, I disagree with your the way you're training a dog, um, would you be open to a discussion about it? Of course I'll be open to a discussion about it in a positive way. Or if I see somebody doing something wrong with dogs, I don't reach out and say, you suck, you're this, you're that. If they're really just trying and trying to do a good job, then that's awesome. Hey, I can offer you maybe some things that you might not have seen just from my experience level. If they're open to it. If they're not open to it, I fully understand. Do your thing. So the overall theme is when, when people are spreading negativity, it's the key is not taking it personal. It's very, very, very hard to do. I understand it. But the real thing you want to do is be able to focus on the positivity, right? And empathy for that person. Being grateful that you get to do what you are able to do. Because if you're not happy and you're not confident, then that's going to affect you big time. So you can work on that and get there. But allow people to do that. I just, I just don't get involved. If someone's like says something negative, I just block them and delete them. I don't have time. Cause I'm like, get in my opinion, I'm like, get the fuck out of the way. Seriously. What I need is I need somebody who's, who's going to be open to direction or people who want the help. There's millions of people in my opinion, who want help and are, are asking questions and are in struggles with their dogs in struggles. Personally, I have a lot of insight because I've been through a lot of shit. I've been through a lot of shit with dogs and I've been through a lot of shit personally. Like I said, like I've been through an engagement that didn't work out. I've been through, you know, uh, a period in my life where, where I stopped me and friends that I, that used to be my friends. We were, we were really close. I did stupid shit. They didn't support me, blah, blah, blah. Like I've been through it some, some, some super low times of my life too. And I, and I, and I plan to talk about that more in depth as we go on. In the beginning, I really want to give you guys more of the dog information, but I want you guys to know me, know about me more and more. So that's really what I want to talk about is, is that in the beginning was just the negativity factors of, of people like sending, saying stupid shit. Who cares? Let them like, let them say what they want to do. When you put up an armor and you're just like, I'm, I have this amount of energy in a day. I'm not wasting any time defending myself. I'm not wasting any time. Like taking the opinion of some person who's saying like, you're a piece of shit, you're no good, you're an abuser, you're a, your pit bulls are the worst in the world, this dog is whatever, like they're, they're closed minded and they're just trying to tell you something and say, you need to change. So I'm not gonna change, I'm confident in myself, I'm very open minded to all ways of training, all ways of working with dogs, I'm very open minded and empathetic to what people are going through. You can do it, is it okay? We're having a little bit of technical difficulties. This is just real world stuff. What's happening? The people are dying. Yeah. The camera's dying, so is it still going? Yeah, yeah it's still going. Okay. Sorry. I promise everybody this will get better and better as we go. This is only episode seven, so. And it's my first time. And Jay's first time, so it's getting better. But this is the real shit. This is how it goes. So yeah, in summary, please, don't waste your time on it. Don't care so much, which brings me into my next point about how people care. All right. To finish that point off is look at the negativity and the hate and all that stuff and just use it as ammunition. Use it as fuel for yourself of saying, thank you. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that type of person. And that person is not that person for life. It's just the way they're behaving in that moment. So they're dealing with things, have the empathy, see it from their perspective. They're going through something to take time. I mean, think about it. They're actually taking time out of their day to try to make someone else feel bad or feel worse, right? That person, whoever did that today, like I really don't give a shit about what they think about me, but they took time. What I care about is I feel bad that that person took time out of their day to type on their phone, you are a fraud. And it's like, to me, I feel so bad that someone's feeling that way to want to send more negativity out. So when you have empathy, then to me, it's like, who cares if someone says about you? And then you have the confidence of just doing your thing. This is your life. It's not about what some person is going to say to you. You're this, you're that. Let them. Who cares? It's, it's all good. Focus on. So what I said was, I have this amount of energy in a day to work with dogs, help people. Anytime that I take away from that and deal with people who just want to attack me and hate me, I'm like, 
to my, my view, I'm so laser focused on like helping dogs and people that I'm like, get out of the way, like move. Like you're, while you're in that state, I can't help you. There's nothing that you can bring and help me. So just move. I'm going to, we're going somewhere. We're doing something here. And when they say, Hey, like, I actually want to learn about what you're doing. Oh, cool. Come back in. Let's show you. Hey, I want to spread some positivity. Oh, sure. Cool. Come back in. Cause that's what we're all about here. So that's why my feeling was in that. So, uh, I'll ask her if she's cool with me mentioning her name, but I think I really helped her through the messages yesterday. I'm just like, just, I told her basically just continue what you're doing. You're, you're, you're working hard. You're helping dogs. You're helping pit, the pit bull breed focus on the positives. You were here. You met me, you met Caesar. you we all agree that you're, you're working hard and doing a good job and making a difference. So just continue doing that and, and don't let those people bring you down because they're, they're coming from down here while you're up here and they're trying to pull you down. So, and you, you, you being affected by it, being hurt by it, being angry, being frustrated, just brings you down to them. You stay up here and hopefully they, you say, I'm sorry you feel that way or, or just ignore it. And hopefully one day they come up to your level. So focus on what you're doing in your life more than anything. All right, Instagram, thanks guys. We'll see you guys soon. I did exactly what I said I wouldn't do. I should say goodbye to Instagram <laughs> during the middle of the show, but it's all good. Do you want me to save it? Huh? Save it? Or share it? Share it, yeah. Share. Please. Share. Now, let's get another question. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. From official Sarah Gardner. Okay. On Instagram. Thank you, Sarah. What do you do when people try to come up to your dog with excitement? Mm. It must be hard when a dog is in training. Do you have a standard thing that you say to these people? Yeah. Get out of my wet. No, I'm just kidding. What I say, so when I'm working with dogs in training, there's a few things you can do. So one thing that I always recommend is getting a vest. It almost looks like a service dog vest. Obviously not actual. It doesn't say service dog, but it has one of the vests that we have is I'll bring it on the next show that we can, you can show people. It has like a big stop sign on the top that says, do not pet, do not distract. On the sides, it has like the big hand with a circle with the line through it that says, uh, yeah, get it actually, so I can show them. It's about the same. Yeah, with the line through it. So I'll show you what it says. Do not uh, dog in training and stuff like that. So humans are visual. So seeing the 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 vest on is going to show people. This is where it gets distracting, where everyone's walking around. It's like Grand Central Station over here. Oh, here, perfect. Yeah, just yeah. Give me that. That's an old one, but it's all good. Oh yeah. It just this is just a sign of what it is. So this is like a really old shitty one that we don't use anymore, but you can see on here it says, do not pet me, I'm working in training. So we have one like that on the top, it says stop, do not, uh, do not pet. So something like this to put on a dog that humans are visual. So they're gonna say, all right, by the way, this is definitely not bomb proof, but you'll, humans can say, all right, so this dog's doing something or working. So that prevents the initial like, hi, right away that of like, so many people are doing in society. It's a cultural issue. It's not really a dog issue a lot of times. Like so many people are asking me like, what do I do? My dog gets nervous and everyone wants to touch them. I'm like, this is again, not really a dog issue. This is a human issue. Humans, a society issue. Humans are going and reaching for dogs because they're just disregarding the way the dog feels and they just want to pet the dog for themselves. So one thing I would recommend is a vest, putting a vest on. That's the first part. It's not bomb proof, but it can definitely help your percentages of people who are going to ask you first, like, is this a service dog? <clears throat> is this a training dog? Is this a therapy dog? So then it opens up the opportunity for you to say, oh yeah, actually I'm working with this dog. He's got some insecurity. Uh, would you mind if I just let him come smell you, but I please ask you to ignore him. So that's a really good way to do it. If someone just comes like, so back in the day when I first started this stuff, I was the guy, known as the guy who would walk this this big pack of crazy bully breed dogs, formerly crazy bully breed dogs and stuff like that. I had the Pitties and the Dogo Argentinos, the American Bulldogs, the Bulldogs, like Shepherds, all that stuff. I had all these guys, including other breeds and stuff too, but it was a lot of big power guys that I would walk like 10 to 15 dogs at a time through the city streets of Hoboken. So you would think that most people would see a human walking that many dogs and give space or not come in with excitement or not try to reach for a huge giant pack of dogs like that. But there were without a doubt times I'd be on like the main city street and people would come running out of the restaurant and say, oh my God. And right away, my first thing is say, stop. 
So it comes off rude in the beginning, but I follow it up with, but they say, what? So, and then I follow up with a kind way where I say, hey, so I'm working with these guys on training or keeping them calm. Would you mind just uh, giving me some space and keeping calm? My first feeling is like, I, I, I'm not so concerned with what a stranger feels about what I'm doing it. My first concern is how is, how is my pack take this? Or how does my dog feel? Because if I'm, it's, it's pressure, right? So, so that's social pressure. A human's coming into the equation saying, hi, I can feel the social pressure of, wow, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to hurt this person's feelings. And I guess I'll just let them pet my dog. But then your dog is saying, wow, my in quote leader, who's supposed to be my leader, just let an excited, unstable energy come right into me who feels uncomfortable. So now I can't trust my human. I, they don't advocate for me, so I gotta do something about it, which is bark, growl, run away, whatever it is. So I have to advocate for my dogs and protect my dogs. Because remember, leadership, protection, and direction. So what I need to do as a leader is I need to protect my dogs from unstable energy, and then I need to direct that human and direct the dog or dogs, direct that human to please give me space. So the dogs are all assessing and evaluating that they're watching that happen. So when I send that person away, they say, oh wow, he's got control of people too, that's great. Now, if that person leaves and says, what, a, what an asshole that guy is, or what a bitch that girl is, like, oh, that's on them. Like, this, is, this goes back to the, my first point of like, let them feel that way and all that stuff, and that's on them if they feel that way. And you'll learn as time goes on, but I always will, will just stop people right away. And, and uh, hold on one second, just something to get their attention. I just want them to be what? Just to bring the attention up. Excuse me, something to get the attention up to me, to the eyes, because they're gonna be coming in down looking at the dog. So uh, excuse me, you can put your hand there to, so, there, so you get a visual there. And then they say, what? Say, oh, would you mind just uh, giving me some space? I'm actually working on some training with this guy. He's a really nervous dog. And, and then you can explain to them in a way, in a kind way, if they're rude about it after that, it's on them. They let them deal with it. So that's, I don't know, I think that answered the question pretty well, right? So vest first is a great way to do it. Backpack, putting something on the dog that says do not pet. Another thing to do, by the way, if it's a dog who's got issues, believe it or not, a muzzle is something that will keep humans away too. That's for even if a dog doesn't bite. So if you muzzle condition your dog, most people won't do this because they feel a personal um, emotion about putting a muzzle on a dog. They say, oh, it makes my dog look bad to the public. I'm like, who gives a shit what it, makes the, <laughs> what it makes the public feel like? The goal is to help your dog. So if your dog's nervous, doesn't bite anybody, but everyone touches, then if you put a muzzle on, humans are gonna give distance. Believe it or not, not always, but a high majority of people who see a dog in a muzzle are not gonna go in and try to pet. So that's another way to do it. We, I, I think I talked about in a previous podcast, a dog we had, it was a German shepherd who was terrified of life. Her name was Freya, amazing owners. She's doing fantastic. But when she came in, she was terrified of life. We live in Hoboken, it's a city environment. And I was thinking, how can I get people to move away from this dog? And I was trying to be creative and I said, wait, so she's a German shepherd. She fits the, the costume of a canine unit dog. So why don't I just reinforce that since humans are visual? So we got her like the tactical canine vest. Remember that thing? It had like canine unit, do not pet, working. So it went from everybody wanting to pet this cute, soft German shepherd and going to reach for her, which made her even more nervous about people to her walking down the street and people moving out of the way because, oh shit, here comes a canine unit dog. And then you start seeing her start walking like this to start coming up more and more and starting feeling better about herself to the point where she was actually going and smelling people and I was rewarding her for that. So then it got, so, it got to a point where she was getting confident, so confident to go see people that I actually had to now bring it back in. So I brought it past the point that I wanted it to be, which was her like really curious about people and almost disregarding me in the pack of just like, I, I'm, I really am dying to meet this person. And I was letting her do that for a while to build the confidence. And then I put a limit on it, right? So rules, bounds, limitations. Then I said, okay, cool. We got to this place where you're really comfortable going to smell people. Now let me bring it back a little bit of saying, you can smell people who walk right by you, but people who walk you know, five feet away from you, you can't pull me over to go meet them. Those are the ones you can just smell as they go by and things like that. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, I have one. Oh, okay. So I have a question from especially in, uh, Emily. Okay. We're adopting a dog with separation anxiety. Any tips on how to get him used to us and correct this behavior? Is it an adult? 
I don't know. I'm sure. If it had some version anxiety already, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So the good news is if, if, you ha- if you don't have the dog yet, then there's no association to, right? So what happens I see all the time is people give up a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? People like kind of give away an amazing opportunity to have a first association with a dog, right? So they go into a rescue or like, it's the same thing when I come outside. So let's just say I have a dog that's staying here for board and train. One of the most important things I do for my, for, for board and trains or for any dogs that we like walking, whoever it is, if I'm working with a dog and the owner comes back into the equation, I always tell them to ignore the dog first and focus on leadership. That has to be the first thing you focus on. All the emotion and the affection, all that shit, that's coming. You're going to get that. It's coming down the road. But the most critical thing you can do first is say, this is who I am. I'm someone who's calm and confident. I know what I want. And you're, you as a dog, you're going to have me as a stable leader for the rest of your life to follow in a calm, receptive way. So by me coming in in an opposite way of saying, hi, puppy, I'm basically doing what a middle of the pack dog would do, who's excited, right? Who's gonna come in and say, <laughs> wagging tail and coming up. So the other dog's gonna say right away, all right, so you don't resemble a leader dog, understood. So I don't follow you. So who else is there? Nobody else? Okay, I gotta figure out life on my own. So I would say the first thing is, is when you're meeting a dog is to focus on leadership. So most people wanna become best friends with the dog right away. Best friends don't mean leadership. If you have a, if you have like a relationship with, you know, you have like a best friend or, or, or just friends period, there's going to be some times where you'll say, Hey, let's go eat at this place. And they say, yeah, yeah, sounds good. But then other times the, the, the friend can say, I don't want to go there. Let's go somewhere else or let's get drinks over here instead. So you're both making decisions. One's following and leading and it kind of switches back and forth. Or you have a friendship where one person makes a lot of decisions or you're in a relationship where one person makes a ton of decisions. The other one's just happy following kind of thing. But you want to be in a, uh, in a relationship with your dog. Now, if you have a back of the pack or middle of the pack dogs, they're very happy to follow. Front of the pack dogs are going to be way more of a challenge. We actually have one right now. It's a Basenji who's seven months old who... She is like, she's a piece of work, let's put it that way. And it's, it's just a dog who's very, very, at seven months, she's super confident. So she came up at seven months. How much does she weigh, that dog? Like 10 pounds or something? Yeah. Whatever she is. She, when I brought her upstairs at seven months old, she walked directly up to Maddie, my American bulldog, who's 130 pounds and big and the whole thing, walked directly up and was like, basically said, who the hell are you? What's your deal? So dogs like that are gonna be more challenging to get leadership with. The good news is, is that once you get leadership with them, they give it to you right away because they understand it. They're like, I understand how to lead. This is in my DNA to be a leader. So I understand what you're doing. However, those front of the pack dogs, you got to be there every day because they, they're, they're always there saying like, are you leading today? Are you leading today? Are you leading today? So you got to be on your A game with those guys. I got off track, but what were we talking about? I got a rant. Oh yeah. So the first impression is the most important. So I would definitely practice no touch, no talk, no eye contact when meeting that dog. Um, I would focus on strictly structure, a lot of structure. So practicing long walk, definitely the exercise is huge for separation anxiety is long walks, uh, bike rides, uh, rollerblading, treadmill, all those kind of things. Then I would definitely practice in the home while you're there uh, duration work. So duration work is putting a dog on an object like a bed or a mat or something where the dog goes there and stays there for a certain amount of time. So people think that's just a cool obedience thing to do, but to, to really understand it, what it is, is it, it stops the body from moving, which then allows the body to influence the mind to settle down. That's the real thing that happens there. People always think it's like, oh, I just want my dog to lay down to ignore or to, so I can just do my thing. And when guests come over all the, yeah, totally. That's totally something you can, that, that's amazing for it. But the real reason it works is, is you're giving direction to the dog, go to this bed and this bed means relaxation. So sometimes dogs with anxiety and um, nervousness, they have a very hard time settling down. Why? The mind is 
going a million miles an hour, right? The mind's saying, go, 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 go. It's in an unhealthy way. So the mind's saying, go, 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 and the body just follows. So you'll get, that's why you get separation anxiety dogs that are circling and they're pacing and they're whining and they're barking and they're going all over the place. So what I do with anxiety is I always drain the energy like significantly right in the beginning. And then we start practicing duration work, which is you're gonna go on this bed and relax. So a lot of times they're moving on there, they're moving on there. I don't care what they're doing on there as long as they're not barking, misbehaving, and trying to get off. When they get off, I just say no and send them back. So I would definitely practice like a place command or a bed command or something like that at a distance with you home. So they start to learn how to stay away from you or get have some distance from you before you actually leave. Because it's funny, like I see so many people who say, hey, my dog has really bad separation anxiety. And I say, well, the first question I always ask, I said, do they spend a lot of time in your intimate space? And intimate space, I mean like intimate right here space or even personal space, which is like just around or they follow you everywhere. Because there's also unhealthy following. So we always recommend calm follower state, calm receptive state, whatever you want to call it. But a, a dog who's following a person obsessively is not calm about it. They're excited follower state. So that's a dog who's <laughs> or anxious follower. <laughs> Where are they going? Where are they going? Where are they going? I have to follow them everywhere. So that's not healthy. So that's why I always recommend with those dogs to send them to a bed, have them stay there. So eventually you drain the body's energy. So the body doesn't have that much energy to, to keep going. And then the fatigue of the body and then not in the ability of not to move actually starts influencing the mind to start settling down. So then it's like an onion. As time goes on, you start peeling the layers of the onion. You'll start seeing the anxiety going less and less and less. And it's also important to have realistic expectations. So sometimes people get severe separation anxiety and are expecting the dog to be good. Like, hey, I did one or two training sessions. The dog's going to be better. To me, fear and anxiety are the two hardest ones that I deal with. Like if you give me a, a, a dog with, who's confident with aggression, I, those, are, those to me are easier than the insecure or anxious dogs with aggression. Those are worse. Because those guys are going away. Like the, the, front of the, the front guys and the ones who are confident with aggression, they bring the fight to you. They're going to say, hey, I'm going to come for you. So if you know what you're doing, obviously I have a lot of experience doing that. I, it's like, all right, the fight's already here. So, so let's go through this thing. You're not going to be able to bite me. You can't use aggression with me. It doesn't influence me. And people always think that when I deal with aggression cases that it's like, or the people who don't know what we're doing, they think it's like we're doing some harsh stuff with them. It's really a ton of just staying in a calm state, allowing them to keep attempting their aggression. If they do, they attempt it, they attempt it, and we stay calm, we block it. 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 So the dog's saying, shit, this aggression that I've used over and over and over and over again that always worked is not working with this human. And it's also not working because number one, he's not moving away. And number two, it's not working because it's not changing their state of mind. So they say, what actually influences this person? Oh, what actually influences when I'm in a calm state or if I move away calmly, that's when I actually get things or get stuff done. So that's really how we do with that stuff. But I would recommend uh, totally in the beginning, really, really, really focusing on the leadership and then focusing on affection like down the road. Because affection, like it's so easy. Like you just pet dogs and getting excitement. It's a simple thing to do. Remember, anxiety is going to come from like a, a very a high level of excitement or nervousness or a combination. So if it's it's really just like anxiety is those behaviors kind of turned inwards. If you if you think about it, like dogs will shake, they'll whine, they'll pay. So if the if if the dog is able to be excited and be nervous with full freedom, they're just going to pace, they're going to whine, they're going to go all over the place, they're going to bark, they're going to try to chew. But if we prevent the body from moving and fatigue the body, then it influences the mind to start settling down. Because to like energy, like the, the, the now I mean energy in this moment of like how much energy does a dog have, like stamina kind of thing. That stuff is fuel for anxiety. It's fuel for fear. So that's what I always do is I always remove that part of it as much as I possibly can which opens the door now where I can start actually influencing the mind to start settling down because it doesn't have fuel. It's like running on E. So it's like the anxiety is running on E and we start starving the anxiety. We start starving the fear. And then that opens the door to confidence, to relaxation, to the things we really want with our dogs, which is just to be in a relaxed, calm, following state and just live life peacefully. Because think about it, how easy is excitement to create? You wanna go for a walk? Excitement. You want to play with your ball? Excitement. 
You start petting them this way, excitement, that's simple. Now go from an excited or anxious dog and getting them to calm, that's very challenging to do. So leadership first, then focus on the affection. Um, uh, as much exercise as you can would be the best. Um, practice, practice distance in the home. So even just staying on a bed this far away or in a kennel this far away or crate this far away. Then progressively as time goes on, increasing that distance, increasing the time that you're gonna leave. Leave for a little bit, of a short amount of time. Put a camera on. As soon as that dog settles, then you return, right? So most people come back when the dog's whining and they let the dog out. So you just rewarded the dog for all that anxiety. I would rather watch on the camera and the dog finally settles and says, all right, they're not coming back. And then you come in once the dog settles. So the association starts happening of human starts returning and comes back to see me when I'm in a calm, relaxed state in this crate. My barking, my whining, my chewing, uh, my pacing, nobody comes for that, but they come for that for when I'm calm. So that's a good one, I think. This is good. Uh, so are, are, is it going well, Jay? Kind of, yeah. Yeah? 95% of the time. That's good. So I think it was a good good episode here. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have coming here? We have, I'm going to be out in LA. So while I'm out in LA, I'm going to probably try to film one or two more podcasts before we go, right? We're going to really make an effort to do more of these to because people seem to like the information and stuff. So we'll try to give more. This is my, this is my, um, my gratitude to all of you. Like obviously like nobody here is really paying me for any of this stuff. And I don't really want the money, honestly. Like we, our business is doing well locally here, which just makes me happy where we're, we're causing a positive change with people and dogs. And I'm so happy and grateful that we get that. So my gratitude is back to you guys for supporting us and being part of this. Cause all I want from you guys is to be able to spread this stuff worldwide to people, educate the world on dog psychology. Cause that's the mission. That's the legacy that I want is I want to be known and remembered as somebody who actually was able to change the number of dogs being euthanized and help human beings find balance quicker. I truly, truly, truly believe that the answer to so many problems in life is not medications. It's not so much of um, like medications, like the easy way now and like all this crazy shit that's happening. To me, dogs are a huge way that we're gonna be able to actually help human beings. They're the ones who are the answer. I really believe that. And I'm gonna be like doing way more content about that of, of, and, and explaining to people of why that works because it, it, was, it, it was what worked for me. That's what helped me go from young, crazy New York freaking guy, out boozing, partying, girls, like, like just doing dumb shit, causing problems, like doing stupid shit all the time, blaming others, complaining, waiting for shit to happen to me, switching to someone who takes full accountability, um, really explored myself and be create, creating a level of self-awareness where I know who I am. I know the issues that I have. I know my weaknesses. I know my strengths. I'm working on my weaknesses. I, I, I try to increase my strengths. I put like shit that makes me nervous or fearful. I go towards that thing. Things that suck, I'm like, let's go do that because that's gonna build more mental power and more strength for myself. So like the person you're seeing here right now is someone that has been created over time and I'm still creating this person to be even better, better, better to live to my full potential. The person that you would have saw here when I was 25, like 10 years ago, would have been a totally different person. I would have been here like this, but like, this is bullshit, I don't wanna do this. How many followers do we have, not enough? This is a waste of my time. How come they have so many followers? This is BS, like, it's just a shitty way to live. So that's why I get so passionate about like, really exploring yourself and being fucking accountable for yourself. Like, so many people are, are out there, and to me it's getting worse, like the, in society of people like blaming others and waiting for other things and, and, and doing the victim poor me for my past. Like if anyone's ever succeeded in that position that you were in, like you have no excuse, honestly, in my opinion, like you gotta go out and find it. And in the moment you say, no one else is gonna do this shit for me and I gotta do it for myself, that's when your real growth is gonna happen. Like, and, and when you feel those fears, it's your mind saying, I can't do this or I'm not gonna be able to or people are gonna judge me, going back to the beginning thing, what people are gonna say this about me, let them, who gives a fuck what they say? That's fine. Like they can say whatever they want. You focus on yourself and your journey. A little bit of my rant here. This is what I do all day here with all this staff here. And they're like, <laughs> I think I'm nuts half the time, but I'm really so passionate about it because one thing I said, this is the last thing I'll talk about was I started realizing a new level of awareness for myself was 
I really found myself getting frustrated when I was trying to, I, I'd see people in more of a victim role or more of a I can't or more of I can't do it. And I would try to influence them and motivate them and help them. And they wouldn't, when people don't listen to what I'm saying or what I'm doing, then it would start to really frustrate me. Cause I'd be like, what is wrong with these people? Why won't they go for it? Why won't they live their life to the fullest? Why won't they really like, like attack life? This is one at bat we have, like go for that shit. And they weren't doing it. And I started to realize that it's not really about them that I was getting frustrated. I saw my old self who I was like, I was like, honestly, like screw you old self. Like I can't believe you used to live that way for that long. And I see that in that person, which is why I go like, really like on the offense about it. So it helped me now realize that it's not, I, I can try to help people, but if they're not ready to be helped, then you can't really help. So that's something that I want to recommend to everybody that you can, you can give advice, you can um, try to help people, but if they're not ready for that in that moment, humans have to be open for change and open to really working on themselves because it's got to come from a deep feeling of I'm going to go for it. With a dog, it's different because dogs live in the moment. So I can just walk on the street here and see an unbalanced dog and just put a leash on and say, hey, we're gonna get you to balance. Because the dog's like, I'm in the moment, so all right, what are we doing? Like, they just live in the moment. Humans live in past, present, and future. Primarily, in my opinion, unbalanced, human, unbalanced humans live in past and future. So if they haven't dealt with the past and explored the past and explored themselves and are willing to explore themselves, if they're in denial, and they're, they have ego going on, forget about helping them. It's the same thing of the, like we talked about, the girl who attacked, who, who said that shit about me, who attacked the pit bull people. I mean, there's haters everywhere. Caesar gets fucking like crushed with haters at times. And it was, it was amazing for me to see. I said, how do you, like, how do you deal with all that hate? He's like, because I'm just focused on what I'm doing. I, I believe and I know the truth is that I'm helping dogs and I'm helping humans. And I said, damn, it's like, such a powerful position to be in, to be able to have full control of your life. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to live like that too. People can say what they want about me, but I'm focusing on my life. And then once they start doing it, so whoever called me a fraud, if they said like, he's a fraud, she's, that person knows nothing about me. The pit bulls are this. They don't know anything about what they're really doing. Let that person go explore in instead of projecting out. And once you go in here and you go deep and you go to the core of that shit, it's uncomfortable as fuck. I'm telling you, like I had to look at it and be like, you're, you got problems. You're, you have a terrible outlook. You're, you're, uh, you're insecure. You're weak. You're honestly a little baby about shit. You're acting a certain way. And it's not fun to go there. But once you go there, that's the shitty part. And then you say, all right, so this is where I'm at. Now you have the awareness. Now you have something to build upon. And then you say, now, what do I have to do to get past this thing? So let me go start meditating because I'm all over the place. Or I lack confidence. So I'm going to go to uh, a gym and I'm going to go work out in something that makes me uncomfortable. Or I'm going to go take yoga. Or I'm going to work with this stuff. Those are the ways you start executing. But the feeling's got to be there first with humans. So... Really explore yourself, be self-aware. You're not weak if you're tense, if you're nervous, if you're anxious. This is what I tell my clients all the time. There's nothing wrong with you. This is just something that, that an area that you can work on. We're all on our own individual journey in life. Like I'm different than Jay, than Cassie, than everybody else here. I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. And if, I, if people ask me for help or they want advice, like this is the whole point of the show. Like people were asking me, hey, you should do a show. You do a show. Here's the show. This is the way I'm living and I want to just share this shit with you guys as much as I possibly can. So you live up to your full potential. I'm t like, fuck this whole limiting beliefs and I can't, I can't do it. Trust me, you can do it. There's people who are in way worse positions than you that have done it. So once you start selling yourself on not I can't, but I can and I will and I'm going to and I'm driven and no matter what the hell gets in my way, I am doing that thing. No one can get your way. Then people calling me a fraud, it's like, later. Oh, I'm fraud. You suck. Later. I'm this. Later. Still going forward. You can it just bounces off you. But when you're in a position of being like, I don't know if I'm good enough and blah, 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 then you allow it through the armor and it can actually become like an infection. So that was a little bit of a rant. I know. I get going. But thank you guys. It was awesome. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode and have an amazing rest of your weekend. And I always get stuck on how to end these shows. But stay calm and confident and we'll see you guys soon. Ha, ha, ha.